it's still fresh yeah a lot of times you you can find yourself going to the supermarket and looking at back to school things and it kind of make you feel some type of way actually i i'm doing this because my niece recently moved out she we you guys saw the the movie i you guys saw the video which i did of us helping her move out and i kind of felt it for my sis because i was feeling like this is so it's so close to home it's a very dear topic for me as well mainly mainly because my son is not so much uh, she's actually younger but she she left home earlier and I could feel it, I was feeling it for her because I was asking her how how are you, how are you really, how is that just, you know, to this scenario. Every time I try to sit out here, it gets so windy, I don't know if you guys will be able to hear. But anyway, um, my notes are down here so don't worry. I just wanted to tell guys, one of the things, if you're in that situation, you find yourself bang in this scenario, you are allowed to let yourself feel those feelings, feel the loneliness, feel the confusion, you know, emptiness, because you've basically built your life around these kids. So you're bound to feel, you know, you'll feel something. And it's okay to shed tears for the end of that chapter, you know, when you are all about this person. But again, it's good to look forward to this period because a lot of people restart their lives at 50 after the kids have gone, especially women, because we tend to put our lives on hold and put everything out there for the kids. So once they've left home, it's actually a chance for you to now rediscover the new you. Who are you now at 50 something or 40 plus years? You know, what do you now like? You'll find a lot of your taste has changed. The things you always wanted to do but couldn't, you now have a chance and it can actually open up a lot of new avenues and a lot of more happiness for you if you allow yourself it's not all bad so believe it or not you'll actually find things that are you'll eventually find things that you love about this emptiness you know that that feeling of loneliness and sadness it has a name it's called empty nest syndrome it's a thing that almost every parent go through once the kids have left and you need to realize that we're always moving forward you know once one stage passes you need to continue to another stage in your life you have to remain open to new and different opportunities now's the time to rediscover all those things that you used to love that you had to stop or put on hold because you know you have to parent parenting is a priority you have to give the kids what they need first so try and think back and even remember what you used to love try to think back do you even remember those things that you used to love because it can be quite hard trying to recall what they were came across a list of some of the things that you can do to like help you get started remind you of what you're about you know what is really in there in you that you need to pull back out one of the things is to volunteer and volunteer at church in a children's home in many places the thing is to plan a getaway right now there might be some restrictions on traveling and that kind of thing but make the plan and if it's close enough it's not too far off you can you can do a road trip you can do a staycation those are great things get some me time for yourself while this window is there even as you're trying to think of maybe more long-term things that you love to do guys today i've decided i'm i'm just leaving my hair as wild as it comes yeah so i'm in the process of undoing it and everything just ignore it so number three is expand your culinary skills this is actually the perfect time to broaden your home cooking or baking skills try out new recipes and discover new cuisines Cu cuisines yeah now you can use all the ingredients that your kids used to hate that maybe you love you know look up you can go online and get a lot of recipes that are probably new to you that's another really fun thing to do 
Number four is declutter your spaces. Declutter areas in your home that are just congested. I found that having too much stuff, even if it's hidden behind a closet door, still bugs you because you know it's there. It, it can affect your energy and your creativity. So there's actually nothing like decluttering to free your mind, remove mental cobwebs, so to speak. Yeah. So as you clean up, you, it's usually very easy to think and your mind just becomes open, it freshens up and it's, it's a great thing. Uh, decluttering your home can help you let you lighten the load on your brain somehow. For some reason, they kind of go together, it alleviates your mood, it will give you more clarity on everything and allow you to concentrate on the things that really matter. So you can look up, you know, ideas on various ways for storage. There's so many ways that you can store stuff that can make your space look really cute, even if you're not going to throw things away. Then you can get creative. This is your time to rekindle your hobbies. You know, um, a new skill or learn a new skill. Things like photography, uh, painting, woodwork, you know, knitting, <laughs> sewing. The list of creative of potential creative avenues is endless there's so many things you can do when you have time so that's another thing that is very it's very important and very very nice to do you don't notice the time going especially if you're doing things that you love time just flies you know that's a good way to fill up your day I guess this is take two yeah Let's see how this one will go. So number four was decluttering your spaces. Um, I found that having too much stuff, even if it's hidden behind a closet door, tends to weigh you down because the bottom line is you you know it's there, right? So it, it kind of, it has the capacity to affect your energy and your creativity. Um, there's actually nothing like doing some decluttering to clear your mental cobwebs, so to speak, yeah, and give a new perspective on life. Decluttering your home can lighten your, it can lighten the load on your brain. For some reason, the two tend to, they tend to, um, they tend to power off each other. It can alleviate your mood and give you, like, um, and give you more clarity it can allow you to concentrate on things that really matter you know a lot of other more important stuff that that was number four so number five is getting creative get creative this is the perfect time to rekindle a love of a new uh, let's say art like painting you can learn a new skill photography maybe woodwork taking a class and learning how to create things out of wood can be really fun you can do calligraphy you can knit you can sew the list is really endless you know you can there's so many potential creative avenues that you can pursue now when you have all this free time on your hands and it's really a nice thing to to take up because when you learn something new, it's, it's always a positive. You know, you never know where it will come in handy. So getting creative is one other very strong point that you can... A strong idea, more to, see, more to say. It's a very strong idea that you can take up. Number six is putting pen to paper. You don't necessarily have to be an author, although many of us maybe have dreamt of it. What you can really do is... Um, start a blog this is a wonderful time to start writing you know you have all this time all this quiet in which you can come up with you know I say you know a lot I'm really trying to control that but this is a nice time to, to start writing putting the ideas on paper you can never know who will benefit from your experience once you share it and then a blog is, is a way you interact with people, you get feedback from guys, 
you get to hear what people think about what you're saying. So you might not be having company, but when you're communicating with people on that blog, it's really like you're in a chat, you know, and that is also another very encouraging way to not feel alone. Number eight is planting a garden. You guys have seen me with my vegetables. Starting a vegetable or a flower garden or flower garden is so rewarding. You know, when you put your hands in the dirt and nurture your plants, see them thrive, it kind of makes you feel connected with nature, which is always such a good thing. It makes you thrive. It actually does. It makes you thrive. And even having potted plants, creating you know, some plants, putting them in pots, you can do it yourself or you can buy them already potted. Just planting them, put this in them around your house gives it another feel and it's another very nice look. Number nine is turning your hobby into a business. Um, one lady wrote that after becoming an empty nester, she took her love, she took her love for decorating, writing, photography, cooking, health, you know, all the things that she loved that she didn't have time for before and she put them in a blog. And then that blog now began to bring her money. It became a business, full flown, and a full fledged business. And it's it's been one of the most rewarding things that she's had to get her through this empty nesting period. Number ten is to take time for yourself. Ooh, I love the breeze, but it's affecting. I know it's affecting the mic. When I go back, I'm sure the sound will be terrible. So taking time for yourself, this is your chance to soak in the bathtub without anyone knocking on the door. You know, kids telling you, mommy, come out and all of that stuff. Or catch up on all the Netflix and other movies that are showing. You know, even if you're just going to rent a movie that's not particularly Netflix, whatever. You can actually watch and binge for a long time. It's your time to meditate, have a massage. Just spoil yourself. Spoil yourself and enjoy your personal time. We'll continue from there. Part two, I did a lot of research and I found that there's so much and it's a big issue. A lot of guys are just so lost when the kids leave. Um, you find yourself now with your spouse. It's like the days you dated long many years ago before before the children came. It can be, you grow apart. 20 something years of raising children where all the attention has been drawn to them makes you into another person. So now rediscovering what brought you guys together is the work in itself and it can be an adventure it can be a nice interesting journey if you go about it right but you have to be very conscious in how you do it so we're going to explore a lot more things i found it very interesting maybe because it's a, a period that i'm now in my son is still at home but he is very independent he's more out than in so it's just a prelude to being there you know yeah so we'll share more on maybe episode two and probably even three we'll see how it goes bye guys thanks for watching